So we're going to pretend that Denise has a distal radius fracture, which is one of the bones in the forearm, and in this case, an extension fracture, fracture called a collies. And we're going to use a SAM splint to try to splint that. I'm just noticing that this SAM splint is pretty wrinkled up. Now a little trick, you can actually take these when you're at home and you have nothing better to do and take a rolling pin and smooth these out. But they never return to normal. Uh, over time they're a little hard to use. So I'm actually going to pull out a completely virgin SAM splint for this demonstration. If I have one, which I do. And there's nothing that makes me happier than a brand new SAM splint. So let's open this up. Today we're going to be putting what's called a sugar tong splint on Denise. By the way, on this brand new SAM splint, the SAM hasn't worn off, so you can see it is indeed a SAM splint and it's brand new. And there's no way I can describe how happy a new SAM splint makes me. But we're going to put a sugar tong on Denise. And the reason it's called a sugar tong is because it looks like a sugar tong. Look, oh look, we have some sugar. So that's why this is called a sugar tong. And the reason we use a sugar tong is because you may remember there are two bones in the forearm. And if we just stick a splint on the top and the bottom of the forearm, we're not really limiting rotation. And by using a sugar tong, which ultimately will go around Denise's elbow, we'll be able to smush this down a bit and try to control rotation of her forearm, which is really important after any kind of fracture of the forearm, and in this case, a distal radius. The first thing that I like to do is approximate the fitting to the patient. Now obviously, if you've got a patient with a real broken arm, it's going to be really painful if we're trying to figure out how to put this on a broken injury. So what I usually try to do is find a friend, usually you're in a group, and I can find somebody about Denise's size and approximate the fitting on a non-injured patient. I could also approximate the fitting on her non-injured arm, or if I'm putting it on somebody that's about my size, I could actually form it to my own arm first, sort of a rough cut, and then transfer it to the patient with a minimum of manipulation. Today we're just doing a training, so I'm going to go ahead and fit it to Denise's injured arm, but know that I would not be normally manipulating a SAM splint over an injury. Again, I'm going to place the blue side against the patient. We'll flex Denise's arm about like this, and we'll go ahead and start the fit. So I want to bring the top side to just about where Denise's knuckles are. And then I'm going to bend the bottom back like this so she's got a nice comfortable place to curl her fingers around. So that's what the initial fitting looks like. The next thing I'm going to do is put those really important structural bends in. And in this case it's going to be a simple C-bend. And a C-bend just looks like may surprise you, a C. And as soon as I start putting these bends into it, I start getting that structural rigidity that's really important. I usually bend it about two-thirds of the way down Denise's arm on each side, and I leave the elbow portion somewhat unbent so I can mold it around her elbow at the end of this. So now I have the SAM splint formed into some fairly rough structural bends. It's approximately fitted to her forearm. And next I'm going to try to fine tune this. So we'll go ahead and place it on Denise's arm. You notice that she's still able to bend her fingers, which is good for maintaining range of motion, especially if you have a splint on for many days. For a short duration, it's not really that important. And uh, I'm just going to start molding it gently. Again, trying to avoid a lot of manipulation, especially over the break, because Denise will start to hate me. Now, there is one trick that I use uh, to make this a little stronger over the wrist, and I'll show you what that is. I will often put a small reverse C-bend in right here, and a reverse is simply what it sounds like. You take the C, and you put a small reverse in the opposite direction right over the area of the wrist and what that is and what that does is it makes it stronger over the area of the wrist where you're worried about too much flexion 
So it makes this portion super rigid. So now we'll fit this back on Denise. Looks pretty good already. Going to finish a few curves here. At this point we're going to put some kind of a wrap around it. In this case I'll use an elastic wrap. And uh, believe it or not there's really no special technique for this portion of the wrap. What I usually do is just try to make it as pretty as I can. You don't want it too loose and you don't want it too tight. I usually put a couple extra wraps at the beginning. And if there's any pressure, in this case on her thumb, I make sure that that's not going to cause any pain or pressure points. Then again, I just start doing a diagonal style wrap. And when I get to her elbow, I put a couple extra wraps in because we're really going to be molding that elbow in a moment and I want that to be well contained. At this point I'm going to get some duct tape and again you have to have duct tape. It's really hard to improvise. Even birch bark and sap will not improvise tape. You just have to have it in your kit. So we'll take some duct tape here. You can move your finger and uh, not pretty but pretty functional. If this was a bad injury and Denise was in a lot of pain I would put her into an improvised sling that we'll talk about in another section. At this point I'm going to take the elbow and I'm just going to bend this excess SAM splint material around and uh, really try to mold it a little bit to try to increase the immobility around her elbow. So I just get the extra areas of SAM sort of tuck them under so it puts a little bit of compression around her elbow which helps to limit this kind of rotation. Also, putting her into a sling really helps to limit rotation. And uh, we want to go ahead and immobilize her in what's called neutral. And even for doctor types, sometimes it's hard to remember what that is in this position. This is supination, this is pronation, but when you're in sling position, what does that mean? And usually when your hand is directly against your body like this, that's essentially neutral. That's neither supinated or pronated. And by the way, in medical school, I remember the way to remember this is in supination, you can carry soup in your hand.